Hey guys, what's going on? It's Dave with Evil Eye Games. Today I want to start our dive into level design. Now that we have a somewhat playable game, we're going to need somewhere to actually play that game. And that's where level design comes in. So, some things to keep in mind when you are designing your levels is, first off, the game mechanics. You have to design your levels to work around your existing game mechanics. If you have a cover shooter and there's only like three pieces of cover that the player sees in half an hour, it makes the cover mechanic absolutely useless. Likewise, if you have AI that operate in a certain way, for example, if you have some shotgunners and you place them 300 meters away, they are not very much of a threat to the player. Or if you have a sniper and you shove them in a really tiny room, it doesn't make much sense. So your game mechanics and your level design really have to mesh together and they have to be in sync with each other. And if you do everything right, the game mechanics and the level design are going to play off of each other. Another thing to keep in mind is your level says more about your world than any storytelling elements. And the reason I say this is because this is where the player is going to be spending most of their time in the game. So regardless of if there's cutscenes, dialogue, events that occur in the game, so if your character is walking down a hallway and he starts seeing posters of Nazi propaganda or he starts seeing peace and love signs, that is going to give away a lot about your world that the player is inhabiting right now. So with the story and with dialogue and with cutscenes and everything else, you can kind of beef up your world, but the most contact your player is going to have with your world is in the game levels. They're going to see these the most and they're going to draw the most about the environment. Likewise, it wouldn't look right if you're telling the player in the dialogue that they're living in some sort of underwater world and they get into a level and it's in an airship. It just doesn't make sense. So you're really building the environment and you're building the story around the levels. Aesthetics are also important too. Like I mentioned before, you really want to keep everything looking like it all exists within the same world. Everything has to be scaled appropriately. Everything has to look like it belongs where it is. Like I've mentioned before, you don't want a super realistic environment and then have all these uh, cartoony props in it. It just isn't going to look right and it's going to throw the player out of the game. And of course, level design is just as important as the game mechanics. When playing games, there are certainly levels that stand out as being excellently designed and very intuitive for the gameplay. And then there are definitely games that exist out there where the levels don't fit in with the game and they essentially make the player miserable. So you definitely have to put some thought and care into level design since this is where the player is going to be the majority of the game. And lastly, there must be peaks and valleys in gameplay. Going hardcore all the time gets insanely boring. And if you notice when you play games, um, there's going to be points where the action lulls, there's stretches where you move between point A and point B, um, there might be cutscenes that occur, but there's some kind of breakup in the gameplay. You can't be going full on all the time. It's going to bore, frustrate, or just disengage the player. It's not going to become something that the player looks forward to. So you definitely want to design your levels around this as well. So you want them to have stretches where there are combat areas and there are stretches where they're trying to look for something or they're trying to do something. You need to have something to break up the monotony in the gameplay. So when we're going about developing level, first thing is that it's going to take some significant time and iteration in order to get levels that work. You're not just going to go grab a bunch of assets, drop them in, and voila, you have a great level. Looking at uh, some of the games that are out there on the Steam Greenlight, 
Uh, there's a lot of them that you can tell just took asset packs and used the default levels in the asset packs. They didn't actually take any time to go ahead and design their levels. And this works really badly because it's not really designed around their game, first off. Second off, the demo levels that come with asset packs are not designed to be used in a game. They're designed with one purpose, and that's to show the purchaser uh, different ways of configuring things and how everything looks. So they can take a look at the environment, they can get some ideas on how to arrange some stuff, and it's fine to take those elements and apply them in your level, but you can't just take that demo level and expect it to be a playable level. And when creating your levels, you want to design it around a few basic concepts. You want to know where is the level located. You want to know what the objective for the player is and what kind of opposition the player is going to have. So this applies to any type of game. So first with where the level is located, obviously this is going to dictate a lot of things when laying out your level. Um, the layout for a map, which is in an urban environment, is going to be completely different from the belly of a spaceship, which is definitely going to be different from the middle of a desert. So you have to really focus on where this area is and what kind of things you would expect to find in these areas. Then you have to think about what the objective for the player is in this level. Are they going to be going from point A to point B? Are they there to kill off certain enemy? Are they there to find something in the environment? So you have to have a pre-planned objective for that player during that map to figure out what they're going to be doing and design the level with that in mind. And of course, there's going to be what is the opposition to the player, which in our third person shooter environment is obviously going to be some AI that's going to be moving around and trying to kill our player. Now this can vary in different types of games, but it's definitely important to figure out what is going to be opposing the player and you have to figure out where to place them, uh, keeping in mind that you want to have um, those valleys and peaks of action. There's nothing more frustrating than playing a game and in a point where you're trying to do something you get interrupted by enemies and it really doesn't make sense why you're getting interrupted. So once we have all those basic concepts down uh, we want to go ahead and start thinking out our level. Uh, some people find it really helpful to draw out something on a piece of paper and kind of just a very quick sketch of the layout of the level where things are generally going to be um, you can do it in Photoshop too, it takes a little bit longer, or GIMP, or whatever program you prefer to use. And then you want to start beginning to block out the level. Now you can use the BSP brushes that are included in Unreal Engine. That's specifically what they're intended to do. And you can use uh, other third-party assets as well in order to set up the level and prepare everything for placement. And when you're blocking out the level, the main thing that you're going to be concerned about is spacing and the arrangement of everything. This is primarily to figure out how big do you need your corridors to be, how big do you need your rooms to be, how far away do buildings need to be. You're primarily looking at setting up the spacing and the area and how the ebb and the flow of the map is going to be. So once you have the level blocked out, at this point you can start creating meshes in a 3D program, like Blender. You can bring in assets that you want to use into the game, and you can start laying them out according to the blocking out that you've done before, and make minor adjustments based on uh, what you find from blocking out the level. And of course you want to start testing it to make sure that it plays well, and that it works well with the game mechanics. So if you end up creating a short hallway and you throw a sniper rifle in there um, for the enemy, there it's not going to really work well because that environment is not really designed to have a sniper rifle in there. Now once you have everything kind of in place and you're happy with the arrangement of that, that's when you want to begin lighting the level. 
Now, prior to this, you're going to want to put lights in the levels, obviously, so you can see, but you don't want to really focus on lighting the level up. You just want to make it plenty visible so that when you're putting things in place and testing it out, that you can see what's going on. But once we get into lighting the level, you're going to start focusing on how well lit different areas are, where lights are located, creating environmental lighting and everything else. And you don't want to do your lighting until you've gotten to a point where you're pretty satisfied where everything is located at. Because you can spend plenty of time working on just the lighting, but if you have to go back and make changes, um, you're probably going to end up wasting a lot of time if you've already done the lighting. So everything you've already done is going to have to be redone again. So it's more important to get the layout first before you actually start uh, getting into depth with lighting on the level. And then once you get your lighting in the level to a place where you're satisfied with it, that's when we'd start introducing post-process effects. And you can use these to fine-tune the level. And you can control uh, a vast array of different effects on the level using post-processing effects. And you can fine-tune it. I kind of equate it to being like Photoshop for the level. So you can change color balancing. You can change the way different effects occur. You can do so much with post-processing. But this is going to be the absolute last thing that you want to do in the level. And of course, once you get done with that, you definitely want to keep testing it as you go along, but you want to test it out some more from that point on because you want to make sure that the level, uh, most importantly, is coherent to your game. Now, there are some specific things to Unreal Engine 4 that you can take advantage of and that you should take advantage of. First off, there's level streaming. And level streaming is an amazing tool for game developers. Level streaming basically allows you to stream in parts of a level based on what the player needs at a given time. So one example of this that I think works really well is say you're building a multi-story building in a game, like a skyscraper or something like that. When you start out the game, you're going to be in the ground level of the building. So you're obviously going to need the ground level loaded up. But you don't see the 50th floor. You don't see the 30th floor. You don't see any of the other floors from that point. So why would you need to load them into memory? All you're going to be doing is taking up the user's system um, resources that they have available to them, and it's going to make the game perform poorly. So you can have something like the player gets into the elevator, and when they go up to the second floor, as they're traveling from the first floor to the second floor, we don't need the ground floor anymore, so you can unload the ground floor and load up the second floor. So this would happen in the background, and the player wouldn't be able to see it, but it would make a smooth experience for the player instead of um, some very old-school technology where uh, PlayStation era, and even after that, you move from one area to the next, and you have to endure a loading screen in between levels. So level streaming makes it really awesome that you can create these very soft transitions that the player will not even notice. So you have to set up some strategic planning when you're creating your level in order to load up the different levels appropriately and make sure that the player has a seamless experience when traveling from different zones. And of course, there are snaps in the grid within the Unreal Editor and you should obviously be using these. Now, if you're creating your own meshes for the environment, design the meshes around the snaps and the grids. So if you take a look at the editor and you can adjust the amount of movement that is affected, and the values are, I think, in there 1, 5, 10, 50, and 100, and these values are super useful because if you're creating meshes and they have to line up with each other, you definitely want to take advantage of those sizes. And when you design your meshes, you want to make them fit within the constraints of those divisions. So, for example, if you're creating a floor plane and you end up 
creating a 103 centimeter square floor plane, that doesn't match up with any of the grid sizes and it's going to be really hard and unwieldy to move around. Whereas if you create a 100 centimeter floor plane, it's going to be really easy because you can turn on the snaps for 50 or 100 and move these pieces around really easy and line them up very easily. And of course, something that I'm going to get into when we start importing meshes into Unreal Engine is the light map resolution and ways that we can make adjustments to make our environment look better. There's definitely several tools built into Unreal Engine that allow you to optimize the environment. And we can definitely optimize the different light map resolutions among many other things. But uh, that one is something that's really helpful when it comes to uh, Unreal Engine. It's very useful when trying to make your environment look the best that it can. So those are just some things to keep in mind as we start getting into where we want to go with designing our level. In the next video, I'm planning on going ahead and creating some blocking elements within Blender that we can go ahead and export over to Unreal Engine 4. And if you haven't used Blender before and you want to try it out and see how it works, uh, I'm going to leave some links down below. Uh, so I'll leave the link to Blender and I'll leave uh, some links to getting started in Blender and some great tutorials. I'm going to be the first to admit that I am not going to be the person to teach you how to use Blender. I am by no means an expert at 3D modeling. I am not a 3D artist by any stretch of the imagination. So those will be available to you down below. So if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below or check out my Facebook page and you can message me or comment over there. And thanks for watching.